Afternoon, everyone. I'm Cole Forty here. I'm giving you guys the first placed gadget deck list from Houston. Um, as long as my records are accurate, he went undefeated in Swiss at the uh, Houston Regional this weekend. Uh, he's playing gadgets. Um, I was actually waiting on Vexicus to find the list, but it accidentally fell into my lap uh, from the gadget thread on Pojo. So I'm going to walk through his list. It's pretty standard machine of gadget. Um, he's playing a few odd choices, in my opinion, for the format, and I'll kind of run down through some of those things. Um, double Tragoidia. Um, the machine engine. Um, he's only playing the two fortress instead of the three. Um, I suppose it was on deck space, the reason why he opted to cut it, but I do feel like, you know, you kind of want to reserve some fortresses in your hand for, you know, in case you need to do something. And the three gear frame. Uh, basic standard gadgets. Two green, two red, two yellow. And then he's playing two maxi. Um, a lot of people have opted to cut Maxi in this format. Uh, everyone feels that it's not as powerful as it was because, you know, when you're against Mermails and good old fire fist i mean you'll be lucky if you can get one special summon draw off of maxi at a time so um very interesting choice um he's also playing one heavy storm one dark hole avarice um one soul taker um he told us in the gadget that he was a very advocate player of soul taker in the main um it reflects his personal choice and he felt like the one in the main helped him out a lot that day um reborn two duality Three MSTs. Uh, limit removal. Um, he said limit removal won him two or three games that, you know, normally wouldn't have been won if I uh, read him right. Um, I still feel the limiter is the win more card, and especially with this deck, I mean, I suppose you can hit 25k on, or 10,000 on double fortress. Uh, but outside of that, I really don't know if I personally would be playing the limiter. But kudos to him, he pulled it off, and uh, that's why we have player preference, you know? Um, the one lance. This is actually something I've been considering for a while. Um, a lot of gadget players, you know, feel that it's a good card in terms of, you know, protecting your monster. And as long as, you know, there's nothing bigger than 1500 on the board, you know, you're pretty much good to go to protect your monsters. Um, double Bottomless, Mirror Force, Double Torrential, Double Prison, Double Compulse, Double Fiendish Chain is a little effect available here. Um, the one call, um, he actually opted to play call. Um, I didn't quite see what his reasoning was on this, uh, unfortunately, but I'm very happy to see that he did it. Um, he can pitch gadgets with Fortress and then, you know, revive them back to get the engine going right back. So, it's just play the Fortress game. And then wraps us up with the Solemn Brigade, or the Solemn Duet, on the main deck. On to the extra deck. Um, Chimera with no Cyber Dragons anywhere. Um, he did it just because he had the room, and you know, in case your opponent left you a Cyber Dragon, you know, what better way to, you know, do it. Um, Big Eye, Pearl, Utopia, Shockmaster, Double Gear Gigant, uh, Fairy King, Photon Pop Operative, uh, Black Ship of Corn, Kaichi Koichi, Double Maze Stroke, Dweller, and Cowboy. Um, I know he was talking about dropping a uh, Maze Stroke or a Fairy King, I believe for a Utopia Ray. And uh, Evo Gishki Monero Geist. Um, I wouldn't drop the Maze Stroke. I would definitely consider dropping Fairy King. But I definitely wouldn't drop the Maze Stroke, t uh, double Maze Strokes there for when you do need it. It's a very powerful defense. And personally, um, when I wasn't playing two Maze Stroke, I, or when I was playing two Maze Stroke, I wasn't playing Dweller. Um, double Maze Stroke, Dweller, and Gear Gigant are basically your staple five. So go from there as you please. Um, as for his side deck, Double Thunder King. Uh, double DD Sandal. This is actually something interesting because I kind of looked at this a few days ago and I was like, man, I wish DD Sandal would be of some use. Um, he boarded this in against Chaos Dragons, um, and I believe he boarded it in against Dark World as well. Um, you know, you smack their Grappa out of the way. You take 1300, but you don't have to worry about the Grappa, you know, raising his ugly head again. So, very, very good idea on his behalf. Um, I'm very happy to see that he brought a Sandal back for this, and uh, such a good idea. So, um, if you guys are looking to try a sailing, I highly do recommend it. It seems like it's a really, really cool card to mess around with now. And, you know, if Gorilla's weighing in on his little ugly head with, you know, some boost, you can ram a sailing into it and get it out of the way. Um, double Imps. Uh, this guy had an unnatural fear of Dark World. I'm not sure why. I mean, he had so much Dark World hate. You know, Crows... Uh, Gemini Imps and Macros, I, I don't know what he was so scared of, um, you know, you bring in Macrocosmos, you just win the game against the deck, but I'm still not quite sure what his phobia was with the deck. Um, Double Crow, um, this is something me and Delhan were talking about, um, we can't beat Fire Kings naturally, um, it's actually very hard to do, I mean, outside of Macrocosmos, but you know, if you crew away their Garudix, it, it's basically a win more situation, you just win. 
Um, he's also playing the other Soul Picker, uh, one Twister. Uh, player preference, you can play Wild Tornado if you want against the <laughs> the Fire Fist matchup. Oh boy, Tinky, blow away. Um, double Trap Hole. Um, I actually, if I read what he said right, um, this card is the bane of Fire Fist Day. Um, summon Bear, Trap Hole it away. And then he's playing Triple Macrocosmos. Um, I'm still kind of curious to know why he's not playing Soul Drain over this. Um, you know, granted, you kind of do lose your Fortresses out of play, but at least under Soul Drain, you can call them back, um, you know, through his own effect. But, you know, uh, it's pretty much a call that a gadget player should make at that point, and, you know, depending on what else he's playing against and what his player preferences are, you know, it will depend on how he plays. So, kudos to the first place player. Um, I don't know what his name is. I didn't really get the chance to read about that. I don't even think he posted it. But um, I wanted to say congrats to you. Uh, you definitely deserved it. And good job for, you know, making gadgets go to first place. Um, I'm probably going to post some of the other deck lists that Cordero posted um, this week. Um, like I said, guys, you have to understand it's more about the conceptual theory of getting the word out about the decks. Um, not so much about, you know, explaining them. It's about getting them out there for people to play test and get their feet wet and learn for themselves. So, well, guys, I just wanted to say I hope you guys enjoyed this schedule deck profile. Remember to thumbs up this video, communicate with me that you guys want to see the other deck lists through that, and I will see you guys later.